Transylvania, Romania, one of Europe's most important natural and cultural landscapes. A mosaic of ancient oak, hornbeam and beech forests, wildflower-rich meadows and pastures. The region supports an astonishingly rich biodiversity of plants, birds, mammals and insects. It's the result of centuries of careful farm management by small village communities. 700 years ago, colonists from present-day Belgium, Germany and Luxembourg arrived in Transylvania and they became known as the Saxons. By the 19th century, these German-speaking settlers numbered more than 200,000. Today, only 30,000 remain. Geboren. I was born in 1910. When I finished school, I spent nine years working on our family farm. Our life was well organized. In those days, the neighborhood communities were supported by the priest. People practiced their faith and went to church every Sunday. We depended entirely on what we produced with our own hands in the fields. So, if we didn't honor God, we feared he might punish us by sending hail to destroy our crops. Mm -hmm. In Transylvania, traditional farming is still carried out in ecological balance with nature. Villagers produce meat, dairy products, fruits and vegetables that have real flavor. It's how food used to taste in Western Europe before the intensification of agriculture and the introduction of supermarkets, which eliminated our dependence on seasonal food production. The region is home to several UNESCO World Heritage Sites, including the Saxon medieval city of Sigishwara, a busy tourist center and birthplace of Vlad Dracul, on whom Bram Stoker based his fictional character, Count Dracula. Transylvania is crossed by a major international highway, the E60, which runs westwards from Sigishwara to Budapest and the Atlantic coast of France, and eastwards, ultimately reaching the border with China. Only 20 minutes from Sigishwara along the E60 highway is the neighboring historic village of Saskis. Its richly decorated 15th century church is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Overlooking Saskis is a 14th century ruined castle where peasants would take refuge from invading Ottoman Turks. Today, the castle offers a spectacular bird's eye view of the village below. Katerina Schasa belongs to a Saxon family who've lived here for generations. After Soviet forces took control of Romania in the 1940s, the Shasa family lands were confiscated. People had their land and their wealth. They had their animals and their barns. But then the communists came and took our family inheritance away. In December 1949, along with thousands of other Saxon villagers from around here, Katerina's mother was arrested by the occupying Soviet government of Romania and deported to a labor camp in Siberia. Here she was forced to work in agriculture, construction and mining. She spent five years in Siberia and was lucky to come back home alive. After communism, the government gave us back some land. But it wasn't the same piece we had before. We were lucky that it was roughly the same size but others were not so fortunate. Like other Saxons in the village, Katerina bottles and preserves autumn food in her cellar to sustain the family through the winter months ahead. But these traditions of self-sufficiency are gradually disappearing since young people no longer want to keep animals or grow their own food. We farmed the land, but it's mostly old people living here. Too many people have left to work in Spain, Italy, Germany and England. This traditional culture attracted the attention of a Scotsman, Jim Turnbull. He saw an opportunity 
to combine local expertise in food and drink production with sound commercial principles and through this work to reverse the decline in village life. In 2009, Jim wrote a business plan and together with founder investors registered the Food Development Company in the UK. This invests in food-related social enterprises which help to improve the lifestyles of people while caring for the environment. Based on these principles, the Transylvania Food Company was founded in 2010. A site was purchased in Saskies and a new process facility was constructed using sustainably sourced materials. Care was taken to harmonize the building with the surrounding Saxon architecture. In October 2015, we refurbished the exterior of our premises and underneath the facade we made an interesting discovery. It's a traditional Saxon building and the owners would place an inscription on the outside. This one says, wisdom, patience and time made the impossible become possible. And the message is true for the activities of our company. Within this historic context, space was provided for state-of-the-art technology to enable the new business to fully comply with EU food and hygiene regulations. Today, the company produces sustainable quantities of artisan food and drink products with an emphasis on natural taste and flavour. When visitors from Romania came to visit us and to taste our products, the most common reaction was, wow, this is just like my grandma used to make. And even when we took product to England, we found that people were saying the same, just like my grandma used to make, just like my mother used to make. And we then looked at the traditional way of keeping food in the Saxon villages is in fact to keep it in the cellar which is a very stable temperature environment, usually around five or six degrees, even summer and winter. And so we thought, yes, our products are coming from grandma's cellar, Pivni to Benici. With the British market in mind, Jim also developed a name for English speakers. We did some research into what vision people had of Transylvania. And we came up with Dracula's Delight, a silhouette of the castle here in Saskies, silhouette of the church in Saskies, and some vampires. A principal objective of the company is to generate economic benefit for the village communities. So they employ and train local Romanian staff for every stage of production. We can keep our staff fully occupied 12 months of the year, making products such as chutney, which we can make from frozen fruit, plum ketchup, marmalade, and the idea is to develop a wide range of products, not in large quantities. These are all artisan products that we produce in very small batches. My uh, job here at Transylvania Food Company as a production manager is to make sure that um, we produce the highest quality uh, products. Recently, we acquired the BRC Global Food Safety Certification, which helps us to gain access to bigger markets. In fact, in Romania, we are the only micro-enterprise that has this global food safety certification. The landscape in this area has been managed by Saxons over many centuries. Their animals continuously graze the hills and valleys. And this activity has created wildflower meadows rich in biodiversity. On the hill above Saskis, shepherds graze their sheep and goats and regularly milk them to produce cheese for the villages. <laughs> Great care is taken to protect the animals. The shepherds construct small sheds which open at the front. They sleep here at night to watch over their flocks and scare away any predators. During the night we sleep here to take care of the animals. It's even more comfortable than sleeping at home. We like the fresh night air. We protect our animals from the bears and wolves because they can take the sheep and goats and kill them for food. Humphrey Errington 
is a farmer who makes artisan sheep cheese in Scotland. He came to Transylvania to experience the traditional way of life for himself. The impression that one has coming into this area is absolutely amazing because we're being transferred into a completely different sort of pastoral world because in many ways I suppose you could describe the wonderful agriculture and pastoral systems they have here as almost medieval. And it's wonderful to see a place where there is such genuine close engagement between the people who live here and the land that they live on. The sort of world that I vaguely remember as a child. Wildflower meadows were originally widespread throughout Europe, including the UK. But the development of intense agriculture has destroyed most of these precious resources. Today, Transylvania is one of the last remaining European regions to possess this type of historic farming landscape. The biodiversity is symbolized by the logo of the Transylvania Food Company, Salvia Nutans, a native flower of the region. Known as nodding sage in the English-speaking world, its purple flowers are highly attractive to butterflies, birds and bees. At springtime, the landscape around Saskiers is covered with blossoms, including elderflowers. These have been used to make cordials for generations. Jim Turnbull saw an opportunity to produce a truly local product on a commercial scale. Here we have an example of a flower that is ready for harvesting. This flower is almost ready, but not quite. We've got some flowers here that are still not open. And on the same tree, we have examples of flowers that are developing. And here we have even earlier. So on the same tree, we'll, we'll come into flower over a three to four week period. And so we can come back once a week to harvest from the same tree. North of Sigishwara, the flowers will develop almost a week ahead of Saskis and Viskri, which is another 100 metres higher altitude, will be another week behind that. So we have a complete harvesting season, in theory, of six weeks. With these sustainable resources, Jim decided to produce a trial batch of concentrated elderflower juice. So a price per kilo of blossom was agreed with the villagers, who began collecting the required quantity of elderflowers. The factory is well located here in Saskis and it creates local employment. We are helping uh, the people from, from this village because we are buying the flowers they picked and everyone is really happy. Apart from their own collection centre in Saskis, as many as 10 collection points are arranged throughout the surrounding region. Often entire families are out picking blossoms. As a result, many hundreds of people join the workforce and benefit from this seasonal employment. Some use their own initiative to travel far and wide in search of blossoms. Our first record was in 2010, when on one day we collected 4.1 tonnes. Last year we beat that record with one day when we collected 5.2 tonnes. This year we collected almost seven tonnes on the first day, so we broke the record again. The blossoms are then driven to Saskis, where a scaled up version of the traditional process converts them into juice. The desired concentration is measured with an instrument called a refractometer. When the concentrated juice has been chilled to almost zero degrees, a haulage company arrives in Saskis and the juice is pumped straight into the tank. The results of the first elderflower harvest were encouraging and the quality of the juice was even better than expected. This led to a supply contract with a food and drinks manufacturer. Another feature of the local landscape is acacia blossom. The plant was introduced to Europe from North American colonies in the 16th century. 
During the Austro-Hungarian Empire, Acacia spread as far east as Transylvania, and today the region has the largest concentration in Europe. One of Jim's staff explained how his grandmother made a cordial from the flowers. We discovered that in this area there are at least three different types of acacia. The one we want is this white flower with the slightly lemony centre. Searching on the internet, we didn't find anybody else in the world making a syrup from acacia, but we did find lots of references to people eating the flowers in salads, coating them in butter and, and deep frying them. Certainly, eating flowers in Italy was a, a common occurrence. As an initial experiment, they collected some acacia flowers, made a few litres of cordial to capture the intense aroma of the blossom, and then tasted it. So we're going to taste some of the concentrate uh, syrup. There was a positive response to the colour and flavour by their customer. As a result, the Transylvania Food Company received its first order for concentrated acacia juice. In the last uh, two days, we've collected over 12 tonnes of acacia flowers, and we've now stopped collecting flowers because we have the required flowers for this year's order. Nothing is wasted. The spent blossoms are collected by Saski's residents, who use them to flavour palinka, a traditional Transylvanian brandy. In 2014, the Transylvania Food Company sent three tankers to the UK, which contained a total of 60,000 litres of juice. This was used to produce elderflower and acacia cordials, which are distributed to supermarkets, pubs and restaurants. Some of the finished products are re-imported back to Saskis and then distributed to a new growing market in Romania. Under the brand name of Pivnica Brunici, Grandma's Cellar, a range of the food company's products are now sold in Romania by the Belgian supermarket chain Mega Image. City dwellers value these traditional food items which bring back memories of their own childhood in the Transylvanian countryside. These products have also caught the attention of the Romanian media. Și vorbim despre garnitura picantă pentru fripturi produsă în județul Mureș care va ajunge de Halloween pe mesele britanice. Un scoțian produce în Transilvania sosul lui Dracula. Deliciul culinar urmărește rețetele englezești adaptate produselor din România. Prune cu usturoi este combinația la care gospodinele noastre nu s-ar fi gândit niciodată, dar care îi aduce venituri frumoase lui Jim Turnbull. Sosul de culoare a sângelui ce poartă numele lui Dracula este la mare căutare. In 2012, during the peak of the elderflower harvest, His Royal Highness the Prince of Wales made a visit to Saskis. He sampled many of the products and agreed to sell selected items at his shop at Highgrove in England. One of these is Transylvanian Wildflower Meadow Honey. The Pandrea family live in the Saxon village of Kritz. They've specialised in beekeeping for generations and regularly supply the Transylvania Food Company with quality honey. We have in our area preponderant is the race of Albina, Apis, Melifica. In our area here, the main type of bee is the Apis mellifica carpatica. It's a species that's good at collecting pollen and it's not too aggressive. The hives on the wagon are painted in different colours. Bees recognise their own hive by its individual colour and also by the pheromones secreted by the queen inside the hive. Emil is happy to explain the art of beekeeping to interested visitors. This is how a frame should look, with a minimum of 50% honey content. This is their food for the winter. The bees consume the honey, vibrate and they generate heat to keep the hive warm during the colder months. All the bees take their turn in doing this work until March, when they go outside and start gathering pollen again. The Kaluga family are beekeepers in Saskis. They have 60 hives and produce almost two tons of honey each year, including wildflower meadow honey, which they also supply to the Transylvania Food Company. On arrival at the company's factory, the precious honey is filtered 
and bottled with tamper evident seals. This Transylvanian wildflower meadow honey is exported to the UK, where it's considered a premium product. It's sold by Fortnum and Mason and at the Highgrove shops of the Prince of Wales. It's a good contract that brings us money. We're maintaining quality and hygiene to ensure good products. In my opinion, it's excellent. Uh, recently, I joined the Transylvania Food Company, also known as uh, Pivnica Bunici. I really liked what I seen there, how clean it was, how very well organized it was, and the products are fantastic from my point of view. For example, this is one of my favorites, is the rhubarb chutney. As well, they also have jams, cordials and marmalade. They are delicious. Pivnica Bunici products have a high potential. The skills of making such products were lost in the process of industrialization. Nowadays, people being uh, busy with work and uh, not having a lot of time to produce these homemade products, once they taste them, I'm sure they're going to buy it, and not once, they're going to buy it for a long time. While the Transylvania Food Company is offering greatly needed employment to villagers, it doesn't stop there. Sustainable agro-tourism is growing in Transylvania, which includes specially arranged courtyard dining events, under the banner of the international slow food movement. Here, visitors from Romania and around the world can come together to sample a wide range of traditional foods and drinks. It's a chance to experience the many tasty artisan offerings of the Transylvanian kitchen while making new friends and acquaintances. For me it's something new because the traditional food you see here is a little bit different from what we have in my region. It's a, it's a matter of tasting and trying this uh, amazing food. Uh, the wine's good, the brandy's excellent, the house is fantastic. It's absolutely marvellous and I truly recommend it. Uh, this, this mixture of so many different people from so many different places. I think it's just perfect. Thanks a lot. Tourists can also participate in a variety of rewarding activities in the local landscape, from walking the flower-covered hills and exploring historic villages to learning about traditional beekeeping and even spending time with the shepherds. Gradually, through the efforts of the Transylvania Food Company and with the encouragement of the Prince of Wales, the outside world is realizing the importance of this region, its precious biodiversity and its uniquely traditional way of life.